Let's talk about acceleration. Okay, so acceleration, as I said, is the rate of change in velocity. So if velocity is changing, there's acceleration. If velocity is not changing, there's no acceleration. It's zero. So that's what acceleration is. It's the change in velocity over change in time. So on your data sheet, you will see this equation with that delta thingy, right? Where you'll see acceleration is equal to change in velocity over change in time, okay? So remember that delta thingy right there? It's called delta. That just means change in. Okay, so how is the uh, velocity changing? How's the time changing? Um, so I write it just a little bit differently in um, class or in here. So we'll use a uh, formula something like this, where this V2 minus V1 over T2 minus T1 almost looks like a slope calculation. Actually, an even better version of this equation would be thinking of it as final velocity minus initial velocity. Okay, because that's how we get the change in velocity is always taking what it has at the end or its second position minus what it has in its initial position. And then I don't even like doing this for time, even though, you know, sometimes change in time, it does work like this. But you guys can figure out the change in time. Don't mess yourselves up by trying to subtract that. A lot of the time we know that it's happening, oh, you know, over 60 seconds or something like that. It'll give you the time. So just keep in mind, acceleration is in meters per second squared because, again, it's a rate of a rate already. And then velocity is in meters per second and time has to be in seconds. It's so important. Now, since acceleration is a vector, velocity also must be, let's say that again, since, um, since acceleration is a vector, then we have to use velocity. We shouldn't really be using speed here. So in this case, direction is going to matter so, so much, okay? because I want to know, is this thing slowing down or speeding up? And that direction that it's going in is really going to help me, okay? Uh, so we really need to focus on that with acceleration, what direction the velocities are, because that's going to help us find the direction of the acceleration. Okay, so let's do an example. We have a car backing out of a driveway. Backing out means I want negative velocities, right? Because backwards, we're always going to say is negative. When we have east, west, north, south, we can define whatever direction we want as positive there. Uh, and then the opposite is, of course, negative. But when we're backing out, let's just keep things negative. So the vo car's velocity changes from negative 2 meters per second to negative 9 meters per second. So this negative 2 meters per second is our initial velocity. There's our vi. And this negative 9 meters per second, that is our final velocity, okay? So don't let the negatives fool you. This is actually going from slower to faster. It's just going backwards. So remember, that's all that the negative means. It doesn't mean um, typically that, you know, this means that negative 9 is a smaller number than negative 2. Uh, it's actually speeding up. It's just speeding up, but backwards. And, of course, this is happening in a 2-second time interval. So if I look at my acceleration as my change in velocity over time, remember, I always, always, always want you to think of change in velocity as final minus initial, okay? And then just be careful and make sure you know which is the final and which is the initial. So always keep that in mind. So my final velocity here is negative 9.0 meters per second. And I'm going to subtract from that the initial velocity. It is so important that you keep keep that negative. Remember, I'm subtracting, and then I'm subtracting this other negative. So keeping the negatives in, making sure you're, you have the correct directions, is going to be so crucial to getting the correct answer for acceleration. Because what happens when we subtract a negative? We're actually adding. So make sure you have that in there. And then we're going to divide that by 2 seconds. So when we do that, we get uh, negative 9 minus negative 2 is actually negative 7. Divide that by 2, and you get negative 3.5. It's acceleration. So what are my units for acceleration? That would be meters per second squared. Okay? So just remember to always think of the final minus initial when you're looking at 
your change in velocity. That is seriously just so, so, so important. And always be hyper vigilant of your directions, making sure you know uh, when to put a negative there, when not to put a negative. Okay. So one last thing, a lot of people look at this negative acceleration and they say, oh, this must be slowing down. That's untrue. We know that's untrue. We know it's speeding up. We know it's going from two to nine meters per second. That is speeding up. We just know that it's speeding up in the uh, backwards direction. So this negative does not tell you whether something is speeding up or slowing down. Okay, and I need to reiterate that again. This negative does not tell you whether something is speeding up or slowing down. How do you tell if something is speeding up or slowing down? Unfortunately, it's not that easy. It's not as easy as looking at the negative or positive. It's not as easy as looking if it's a bigger than one or less than one. How do we tell? If initial velocity vector and the accel acceleration vector are in the same direction, then we have acceleration. So what just happened in the last example? Our velocity was backing up, right? And so, uh, and it was speeding up. So our acceleration also backs up, right? That's when we know it speeds up. When those two things are in the same direction, it speeds up. So we just did something a little bit different where we knew it was speeding up backwards. So the velocity was negative and then it was speeding up. So we knew our acceleration had to be negative. Okay. So if it's speeding up, those two things have to be in the same direction. If the initial velocity and acceleration vectors are in opposite directions, that's when we have deceleration. Okay, think about this. You are going forwards. There's your velocity. Okay, and you slow down. How the heck are you going to accelerate in the same direction and slow down? It's not at all. We need something to work against this. So if the acceleration is going that way, that is slowing down. Okay, so if those two things are in the opposite direction, then you're slowing down. And that's how you can tell if you're speeding up or slowing down. Just keep in mind, that means velocity could be positive and acceleration could be negative, or velocity could be negative and acceleration could be positive. It doesn't matter which one's which, that's just telling you direction. We know that if they are in opposite directions, that is slowing down. Okay.